Frank Quietly and Grant Morrison use a very specific way of approaching the art in the opening chapter of We Three to create a purposeful point of view from the reader. This episode, I'm going to look at how they incorporate a sense of three-dimensional visuals that lean very heavily into creating a sense of depth and space on a flat 2D comic page. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. So We Three is a comic about the military doing testing on animals to make them into controllable weapons. Firstly, it's really, really good, but a big part of what makes it special to me is the approach taken to pull you into the story. It attempts to create a sense of reality through its use of depth. Most panels have a built-in layered system to the visuals, where there's a clear foreground, a clear background, and some space implied between them. By doing this, Morrison and Quietly are able to create the sense of a real space and reality through that, and ask the reader to actually dive into the scenes a little more directly. On the opening page, the final panel has our first proper example of it. You've got a clear foreground element, with the man running on the treadmill looking at his trainers, and in the background a grill over a vent, with darkness and light behind it. So the trainers and legs and the treadmill give us the foreground, and you essentially end up moving past those to the grill, and then past the grill to the lights behind it. And by doing that we get a real sense of actual depth and space in this world. On the next page we see similar. There's trainers in the background, the grate in the middle, and then the shape of something in the foreground. By doing that, they're also creating a real sense of movement in that flat space. In the real world, most of us will see everything in depth, but on a page it's a bit more difficult to do that. Creating three layers to the image, starting with the nearest element drawn essentially on the surface of the page, and then moving backwards, helps give we three the feeling of replicating the way we would see things normally. The best example I can give us to understand this is like a 3D movie. A lot of the time in 3D movies you'll see that the screen acts like a kind of window, so the depth actually exists behind the surface of the movie screen. But it also does create a few focal points in each image, which can help with engagement, because as a reader you're being asked to invest more directly by exploring the image and the space. The panels before this on the first page are different in that they give you a single, simple, clear image. Shoes running, back of head, trainers. But then when you're presented with the final image of that first page, you have to become an active participant in diving into that panel. Anyway, what we get in the opening is specifically a sense of the foreground elements, as I say, being on the surface of the page, with everything else being placed behind them. As you progress, you can see this clearly too in the man standing in front of the door. Morrison and Quietly are aiming everything kind of backwards and behind the page, away from the reader. He stands in front of the door, he blocks us from it. The final panel of this page shows the head in the foreground, the broken smash door in the background. And so when you get this insanely beautiful double splash, you can see how it keeps the same approach but differentiates it a little bit. Now we've got the moment in the 3D film where someone jabs something out of the screen towards the audience. So what we've been told by the rest of the pages is actually in the foreground, which is this man, is now actually in the background. And the foreground elements are these bullets. Grant has also added a blur onto them that gets blurrier the larger the bullets are, and it feels like they're almost coming out of the page at us. In reality, obviously, the bullets are just becoming the foreground and the man is becoming the background, but because of the previous setup, it feels like the bullets are extending closer than the established foreground. And ultimately, it's still relying very heavily on the idea of establishing direct planes of visuals to create a sense of a realistic idea of actual three-dimensional space and things moving through that three-dimensional space. In this example, Quietly, Morrison and Grant actually force you to have to look past the bullets coming at you to try and get to the image at the centre of it of this man being ripped apart. It's really clever and a really good way of building this idea of like a 3D world contained within the pages. And this manifests itself in other ways too, some of them very subtle and like the bullets, some not subtle. But everything comes down to understanding space. Pages later, someone is cutting open a stack of papers. There are two panels at the top of that page, the first is a hand in the background plane, the second shows the same shot, but now the hand is in the foreground plane. Space is clearly defined, shifting an element from the background to the foreground, the hand going from being smaller to panel one and larger into panel two. There's other ways to portray this, but the choice to do it in a way which emphasizes three-dimensional space and movement all works to keep this feeling of real space apparent in the work. And it's also doubled down on the way it uses shadows and the way that the shadows extend closer to the reader. And the last page of the first issue is another really good example where the elements are clearly delineated. The foreground exists in the full black areas, the trees, the land around the bottom of the page. Then you've got the middle of the page with the full black lines and the trees and the landscape. And then the background is at the top of the page with the helicopters and the rolling hills. There's been a clear sense of depth created by the colour holds over those hills in the background which wash out some of the black and they end up getting deeper in the middle ground and then completely eviscerating everything by the time they get to the foreground. It's so easy to see the three-dimensional depth in this image, and once again, it falls into the sense of creating reality, and a sense of real space to navigate in this composition. 
As with the other examples, it also creates a feeling of motion or movement. In this case, as you start from the top of the page and work your way down, you are, as a reader, actively navigating your way through this space, much like they make you do in that first example where you have to go through the grate to get to the light. You start far away, and as your eyes come down the page, you get closer and closer to the characters in the story in the foreground. Again, like the double splash with the bullets, you're actually moving through that space too. And Morrison quietly and Grant put work in here to do this effect, and for a book that is really so much about the lead characters being trapped and exploring the wider world as a means to escape, it's a particularly clever approach to lean into that to back up the themes of the work. By focusing so much on the approach of spatial awareness and the sense of open space and the distance between objects being constantly reinforced, they create reality on the page in a story about animals that can talk and be weaponized. Understanding space is the main thing here, and breaking it down into simple planes of background, mid-ground and foreground, and then making objects play in the space between them is key to making it work. Thanks for watching. Strip Battle Naked can be supported at the Patreon page, where you can get access to years of exclusive content and writing from me. I'd love your support. You can also get my monthly magazine panel by panel at panelxpanel.com, and I'm on Twitter at HassanOE. Finally, hit subscribe and that notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and I'll see you next time.